call the January 3rd, 2022 meeting of the Lincoln Park City Council to session. Everyone will please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, which will be immediately followed by the invocation by Reverend Peter Moore of City of Gold Church. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We bow our heads. Father, we thank you for tonight. For today is the day that you have been made. Lord, Father, we thank you tonight for who you are. Lord, we thank you for just another day. Father, we let's pray for the city council and the mayor on tonight and their families that you keep them uh, in perfect peace, Lord. Lord, right now we pray for Gary Hyman's father, Captain Steve Hyman on tonight, as he lost his father. Let's keep them in, in, in our prayers tonight. Father, we thank you on tonight in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend. Uh, Captain Hyman's father, he uh, was, uh, was not expected. It was a, a sudden, sudden accident that uh, that caused his demise, and so it was uh, quite a shock to his to his family as as any death would be. Yes. So, if we could uh, have roll call. Sir. Council Persons to pray. Higgins. Here. Kelsey. Here. Ross. Here. Salcedo. Here. Tobin. Here. Ian Mirner. Here. Well, I hope everyone had a um, enjoyable Christmas and, uh, and a happy new year. Uh, we are back, um, for a little bit anyway, as uh, with live meetings. And we've already had uh, two under our belt this, this evening. And um, well, we're looking forward to this one. And I have to thank uh, the Superintendent Terry Dangerfield of uh, Lake Park School System and the, the school board for allowing us to, to be here today. Yet, um, even though the high school was built in, in 1960, so you're looking at a 60-year-old building at this particular time, um, this facility here is, is still, I think, among the, the finest in the, in the state. And it's, a, it's that way because of its upkeep and care. And the person that does most of the, the care for this there's a fellow by the name of Paul Knapp. He's up uh, at the control booth right now. Now, Paul has been working here for some 30 years. And this, uh, I understand, is his last year. Um, and a lot of the work that, that went into the arrangements here and to make sure that the sound was right, and even um, the, the Christmas tree and or the ornamentations here were all uh, Paul's. Event. So Paul, thank you so much for that. I also have to thank our, our filmer here, Don Galinsky, who has, um, his responsibility is to usually tape and make sure that the show gets on the air the proper way, the council meeting. And uh, when we throw a curveball at him, then when it comes down to being at a, at a different location, it makes it a little more, more difficult for him, to, uh, for him to take care of business. Now, while we are having a live meeting, when we're still at um, really a pandemic stages with uh, the, the number of COVID positive cases uh, just in the last uh, two days in Lincoln Park, uh, where 41 reported um, just two days ago, and 61 was the reported one from, I think, today. So 100 cases. Um, we've had more cases this, this past month than we've had at any positive cases at any other time in, um, since the COVID situation has started, COVID-19. Uh, the reason we're having a live meeting is because the Open Meetings Act requires us to, to have that. Um, the Open Meetings Act had um, 
an extension that said that we were able to go and to meet electronically um, via Zoom or whatever by still the end of December. The, um, the legislature did not extend that or, or put it put it beyond. And I guess in their defense, they didn't realize how uh, the, the other strands that were coming out were to be in what situation that we are. So to that end, there is uh, action that's going to be taken in the House and the uh, State Senate to uh, have this go to where we're allowed to have electronic meetings, the possibility of which until we uh, totally get out of this, this pandemic. The reason we did not utilize the, the, the City Hall building for this is that our location is um, very tight quarters. And for us to get everyone in, I think, quite frankly, would have uh, posed a risk to, to all that attended. So through the school, we were able to uh, take care of and utilize this facility. And I think that that's the best for all concerns for right now. But I will be asking and, and putting forward a resolution, this latest resolution in the um, action items, asking for um, council's support of Senate Bill 0792 to allow electronic participations and the Open Meetings Act, but that will be coming forward after that point. So I'll move on to the consent agenda. Resolve that the following items listed on the consent agenda be approved as presented to the Mayor and City Council. One, approve minutes for every meeting held December 20, 2021. Two, adopt poverty exemption guidelines. Three, attend the training police department FTO course. Four, attend training MME Winter Institute. Five, solicit bids LV Bride. Six, solicit bids Brown Maintenance. Okay. Now for the call the roll. Do we have a discussion? I have a question. If you don't mind. Well, discussion with with the consent would, would cause the um, discussion item to be withdrawn from the consent and then put on to miscellaneous. I would move uh, number six, list of bids from the meetings to an action item. I have some questions. Okay. And this is a motion if someone wants to uh, support that. Uh, well, you don't, you don't need a motion. Just three questions. So then, um, move on the uh, consent agenda with uh, number six being uh, moved to um, the action items. the consent agenda with the first four items. So, okay, we did. Right. Clerk, call the roll. Councilpersons Ross? Yes. Higgins? Yes. Dupre? Yes. Chelsea? Yes. Salcedo? Yes. Tobin? Yes. And Mayor Hurts? Yes. Moving to the action items. First item has a cover letter from Ashley Kinchak, uh, City Manager Coordinator. In background, the contract with Overtime and Cleaning Services LLC was terminated on December 2021 due to dissatisfaction that staff and council members had with their services. Under that contract, every time the Cleaning Services LLC was responsible for the cleaning, City Hall, Kennedy Memorial Building, and the library. 
At the November 15 council meeting, we requested to dismiss the bids for a new janitorial service company. Contract is split into two bids, one for janitorial services at City Hall and the library, and the second one for janitorial services at KMD. After reviewing the bids and completing reference checks, we would like to award the bid for City Hall and the library to VM. Okay, and Jimmy the most bidder. So the, the bids were VHM Enterprises uh, for City Hall was $341.25, a monthly cost of $1,365, and total annual cost of $16,380. Um, Wilkins Pro Clean, $375. And then the monthly cost is $1,500 for total annual cost of $18,000. Supreme Sanitizing, uh, City Hall cost $900, monthly cost $3,600, annual cost of $43,200. The library, VHM Enterprises, uh, $145, monthly cost of $580, for an annual cost of $6,960. Wilkins Pro Clean, library $225, Monthly cost $900, annual cost $10,800. Supreme Sanitizing, library $600. The monthly cost would be $2,400, annual cost of $28,800. For KMB and events, Wilkins Pro Clean um, has $475. For the KMB special events, $315, the weekly cost. $475, monthly cost $1,900, with annual cost of $22,800. Supreme Sanitizing, Kennedy Memorial Building, $1,000. They did not submit something for special events. The weekly cost would be $1,000, and the monthly cost $4,000, annual cost $48,000. So the resolution, whereas the contracted with Evertime and Cleaning Service for General Service Services were terminated in December 2021. And whereas the city solicited bids for a new contractor, and the lowest bidders were VHM Enterprises and Wilkins Pro Clean. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the mayor and council hereby award the janitorial services contract for City Hall and Library to VHM Enterprises for a period of three years with a yearly contract amount of $23,340. However, it resolved that Mayor and Council hereby award the janitorial services contract for KMB to Wilkins Pro Clean for a period of three years with a yearly service contract amount of $22,800 plus the cost of as needed weekend event cleanup. We have further resolved that Mayor and City Clerk are hereby authorized to sign all contract documents. Any support? Okay, discussion. I just have I, I don't remember. Mike, talk in the mic. I don't know if it's happened in the past or not, but I don't remember um, that we had two separate companies doing this job. It's usually one company doing all the building. Um, is there a reason why VHM didn't want to do the KMB? Any events? If I may, um, yeah. the, the bids were actually split because um, the Kennedy Memorial Building is essentially a community center whereas city hall and library are, are a lot more similar to like a general office two different types of cleaning are usually required for those two different types of buildings that's kind of the whole for council if well we're uh, so that it can be picked up by a camera we need you to get as close to the microphone as possible just a quick comment there in regards to the Kennedy Memorial. Can we watch the, I guess the cost for that? Because I think we can offset some of those costs for the special events if we had to raise the prices. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Further discussion? Through the chair? Yes, sir. Um, I just wanted to comment um, on uh, Councilman Tolman's uh, question. At one time, 
we had five different cleaning companies for the city when, when I first came out. Um, sometimes the, the cleaning company will specialize in um, multi-purpose areas or in office areas. So I think this is actually a, a good thing that we're doing here. Uh, my question is the, the huge amount of difference in the bid. And do we have, um, have we followed up on, do we have any work for other municipalities or other uh, schools? So like for the Kennedy Memorial Building, we have um, some references from different community centers. Um, and then Wilkin is for, I may have that back there. Uh, VHF, VHF, uh, we've, we've cross-checked other references as well. So we, we have gone back and looked at that. Further discussion? Okay. Clerk, call the vote. Council Persons Higgins? Yes. Tobin? Yes. Dupre? Yes. Kelsey? Yes. Ross? Yes. Salcido? Yes. And Mayor Harris? Yes. Next action item that we have has a cover letter from our city manager. <laughs> At a study session held on September 20, 2021, I was tasked with renegotiating with our building department contractor to find a way to create some flexibility and lessen the economic impact of trying to develop an in-house building department. Uh, during the fall, I met with McKenna President John Jackson on several occasions, both in person as well as via telephone. The task of understanding as a result of these discussions. This agreement is set up in a phased manner. The first phase begins upon the city hiring the first two positions in the department. As requested by the city's building official, these positions would be lead permit technician and senior building inspector. Upon hiring these individuals, the city needs to provide McKenna either a 90-day notice if we hire McKenna staff or a 30-day notice if we bring somebody new in. This phase will trigger a reduction in fees paid to McKenna from 60% of the department revenue to 52.5%. This reduction would re represent approximately 7,500 additional revenue each month in the city. It is anticipated that the revenue gained by the reduction in fees would cover approximately half of the cost to hire these positions. The next phase begins when the city hires more of the staff and department. When the city is ready, the city will provide McKenna a 90-day notice that the city will be transitioning. At that point, if any support is still needed from McKenna, they will be available at a contract and hourly rate. This agreement would be the first step towards development of an in-house building department. However, I must caution that the same challenges we have discussed in the past exist. We are still experiencing a tight labor market with inflationary wages. Even with approval of this agreement, we must realize the development of an in-house department is going to take a significant time. This agreement provides the ability to be flexible. Okay. So whereas the City of Lincoln Park desires to develop its own building department, whereas the city will continue to require partnership with the current building department contractor and the attached letter of understanding provides a framework for this continued partnership. We resolve that the Mayor and City Council hereby approve the attached letter of understanding as presented and we further resolve that Mayor and City Clerk are authorized to execute the final agreement. So, so, discussion? Go ahead. James, in your letter, you stated this first phase represents approximately 80000 over the course of the year. And, and this is just for the first two positions. So given that September to, to January has been a lot of change, and we know that the job market is very fierce, so are we looking at an even bigger adjustment than, than what we had figured back in September? For the overage, I guess, of what we're going to end up paying? No, I think we're probably still pretty much on target if, if going forward with that. So the seventy-five hundred dollars of additional revenue each month would offset what would be approximately twelve thousand or so each month in 
additional expenditures. Um, that's where the eighty thousand dollars came from. Um, obviously, if we're able to, to swiftly move through the transition and develop an in-house building department, those extra costs would be significantly reduced. I'm trying to give like a full or kind of worst case scenario. Further discussion? Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, Mr. Bernard, um, microphone. Um, the discussion with the area and um, John Jack, with uh, Joe Jack, John Jackson, um, could they give us a start period of when we're going to start transitioning this? Or is this still just being discussed and that being moved forward? Well, this letter of understanding would give us the ability to try and hire right now. You start, start uh, and, and then, depending on if we hire an outside, somebody from the outside or somebody who's currently working for McKenna would, would give that kind of start date for the transition. Um, McKenna has uh, a non-compete clause that they, they'll waive, but they want to have 90 day deal. Okay. Well, yeah, I understand that. I just, I just wanted to know how far we were to actually start to turn this around and bring it all in house. Yeah, we'd be able to, this would essentially allow us to, to start advertising. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion? Court call the vote. Council Persons Yes. Yeah. Yes. Kelsey? Yes. Ross? Yes. Salcido? Yes. Tobin? Yes. And Mayor Cox? Yes. So now we have um, the first was the miscellaneous resolution that proposed that um, as mayor and council we do a resolution to support Senate Bill 0792 to allow electronic participations um, to continue during during COVID um, and to allow it to be uh, qualified under the Open Meetings Act. So I would move on that. Do we have discussion? Clerk, I'll roll. Council, I'm sorry, Mayor Cox? Yes. Council Persons Ross? Yes. Dupre? Yes. Higgins? No. Kelsey? Yes. Salcido? No. And Tobin? Yes. Okay, the next two items were the ones that were um, dropped down from the consent agenda. Both of the items have uh, essentially the same cover letter from Ashley, Ashley McKinchick, our city manager coordinator. So background, the current contract with U.S. bonds for city ground maintenance expired on December 31st, 2021. The contractor chosen for city ground maintenance will be responsible for cutting the grass at various city locations, including city parks, municipal buildings, medians, rights of way, pump stations, and city-owned lots, etc. This will occur on a weekly basis each year throughout the fall. The contractor is also responsible for a one-time spray and fall cleanup of each city location if the city feels that this is necessarily necessary need. This cleanup will include removing branches, litter, debris, and anything else that may have accumulated before or after the winter months. The contractor chosen for the LP Tri program will be responsible for properly removing and disposing of all brush, noxious growth, fence line, overgrowth, grass, weeds, debris, rubbish, removal of abandoned appliances, rodents, snow, slash ice removal in a legal manner, any standing or stagnant water from pools and ponds, etc., to proper drainage and dispensing of the appropriate chemicals for pest control. All removal shall be in accordance with any and all local, state, or federal laws or requirements. So the first item is, whereas the city contract with U.S. laws for city grounds maintenance expired on December 31, 2021, 
whereas the city did not seek to extend the contract of U.S. bonds for ground maintenance. Now, therefore, be resolved that the mayor and council of the city of Lincoln Park authorize the city to solicit bids for grounds maintenance. Who is our mover? Okay. Councilman, would you pray? Yes. All right, Mike, my question is the contract expired on December 31st, and the bid renewal isn't until March 7th of 2022. Who's going to remove our snow from now until March 7th since the contract expired? Right now we're talking ground changes, are we not? Yes, ground changes. Um, you know what, we're going to have to honestly have to get back to that. All right, that was my question. That's why I wanted to bring that up. We're coming. Um, the chair, I, I thought that it said in here that it was a 90-day extension of the contract. It wasn't renewed, and that would put us, um, the date would put us 89 days. Um, I'm just kind of confused as why something expired on the 31st. Is, is, was it dealt with before now? And if it does have the 90 day extension that I think I believe I read, um, that's really cutting it close. Right, simply put, it was an oversight. It's just an oversight. I, I, just, I think that these things need to be kept up a lot better because they, they shouldn't be expiring in an extension of 90 days when. You know, March is when we really need people to start doing this kind of work. Right, no, it was, it was an oversight, and I'll take the blame, even though it wasn't, the snow removal wasn't really even brought up in the conversations as we were moving forward. And so, but there is a 90 day clause after the expiration of the staff track? I believe so. We need, it's in the sample contract. It's in the sample contract? Yeah. Oh, that wouldn't be the, the current contract. Ladies and gentlemen, we can't hear what you guys are, are saying. So, um, for the for the record, so I was asking if there's a clause that is an NDA extension. James said not in the current contract. Yeah, I, I don't believe so. I don't have the contract in front of me. Okay. Uh, yeah, we can. We need, we can't let this stuff happen. We have to keep it going. That's all I have. Crew, did you hear? Yes. Um, I, I didn't see anything in there about the weeds that's been the ongoing problem for the last five years. And uh, we'll make sure that weeds are in there before we close. Um, yeah, do you want to be taken care of? Anything further? Right. Let's call the roll. Councilperson Salcedo? Yes. Higgins? Yes. Dupre? Yes. Kelsey? Yes. Ross? Yes. Cogan? Yes. And Mayor Yes. Yeah. Next item is whereas the current contract with U.S. loans for the LP Pride program expired on December 31, 2020. Whereas the city did not seek to extend the contract with U.S. loans for the LP Pride program. Now, uh, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and council of the city of Lincoln Park authorize the city to solicit bids for the LP Pride program. So moved by Councilman Ross, supported by Councilwoman Tobin. Do we have a discussion? It's the same discussion we had on the other contract that um, it expired. And my question is if it did have a 90 day extension? Is, you know, if this contract has an extension, James? I don't have the contract in front of me. Okay. All right, well, that's, that's all I had on that. Okay, further discussion? All right, Court call. Council versus Ross? Tobin? Yes. Dupre? Yes. Higgins? Yes. Kelsey? Yes. Salcido? Yes. And Yes. Yes. 
Next item that we have are for consultation payable greater than $25,000. Um, the, the first item, the Blue Cross Blue Shield, has been, uh, the check has been released for the due date. So we resolve that the council claims payable for those items greater than $25,000 be approved as follows. Blue Cross Blue Shield, January 2022, retiree net advanced plan for retirees and active, $188,582.42. Limb lockers, tree services, trim and removal, reissue invoice number 10, $30,300. Okay, discussion? Hearing none, the clerk call the roll. Council person Higgins? Yes. Ross? Yes. Dupre? Yes. Kelsey? Yes. Salcedo? Yes. Tobin? Yes. Amen. Yes. We've now reached the, the time for the city manager's report. Mr. Kazan. Yeah, hi. Um, so I'm not going to go too deep. Uh, it's our first live meeting in a while, and uh, I see we have a lot of people here to speak, so I'm going to try to be brief. Uh, just a quick shout out for our two guests and their work getting the snow, the snow cover goes, taken care of. As the mayor mentioned, we do have uh, COVID has come back with the vengeance. Um, and we are trying to do everything we can to keep everybody safe. Um, just a reminder that when in um, city buildings, we are requesting that everybody wears masks. Um, another quick quick note, I spoke with John Myers today um, about the new Taco Bell on South Lake Road. They are open. Probably try and delay some of the, uh, the exterior work as it's in the middle of winter, but they're hoping to get over pretty quickly. So there's some good, good signs. I know there's still some concerns of, on the residential road behind it. We'll make sure we get those addressed. Um, and honestly, with that, we have two short weeks in between these two meetings. That's all, uh, all I have to report tonight. So I'm happy to answer any questions anybody may have. The chair. Yes, sir. Can you give us an update on the water rain breaks and the way the major ones uh, were close together? Well, we had, um, I, I won't know the exact number, but uh, at yeah, Dix and Gregory, we had approximately <coughs> five water rain breaks over the course of a couple of days, all within a couple hundred feet of each other. Um, those have been repaired, I believe, um, and I haven't heard anything else since uh, the middle of last week. Uh, but they were. Some pretty good water main breaks. Um, the DPS have done a fantastic job on those, um, leading to the system, and it's really showing, it, um, showing itself. Yes, ma'am. Um, how is that affecting the plan, the, the um, main breaks? How is it affecting the way we can find the plan work? Which plan work are you referring to? Just the general DPS, what, what they normally have, their normal schedules. Well, it, it, when we have to um, call guys off of, of other projects, it's definitely going to delay a bit. Um, usually, the, the water crew you know, will be working on different water projects, so that'll be the area that's most effective. Sometimes in some of these larger, larger issues where we have to bring some of the streets guys, uh, it's going to affect that department as well. Same thing with the sewer. Uh, so this this one of the things really put us behind a little bit. Thank you. Anything further for the city manager? All right. Then we we'll move on to uh, department head report. Um, I do have Lisa Grace here on the Zoom call. Try and, try and make this work. I also was able to provide all of you a printout of what would have been the PowerPoint and we had the technology to do it today. So I'll turn it over to Lisa. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Yes. Okay. 
to make sure it's kind of cloudy on the side here and everybody. So um, be patient if you have questions. I'll, I'll try and listen very closely. Um, my presentation tonight is pretty, pretty brief. We're kind of in an in-between time right now. Um, the 2021 fiscal year ended back in June and the audit presentation was given to the council um, in December. So that's all pretty fresh in everyone's memory. We did a contribution to fund balance of $1.28 million, um, which is very good. Um, however, this was primarily due to the, the CARES Act fund that we received to offset the public safety payroll. Um, the majority of that was, was what contributed to fund balance. So without that, we would have been just about break even for the year, which still was, would have been you know, good for us. We didn't know where we would end up with um, all of the changes with COVID. Um, of course, our biggest concern next year and continuing to this year is the port revenue is down significantly. Um, you know, for quite a few years, we had great revenue streams coming in from all of the tickets that were being written by the police department, and that's just really tanked the last couple of years. So um, since COVID happened, and we continue to watch that. So that's just kind of a quick review of, of last year. Um, currently for the current fiscal year, again, talking about the court revenue, but that's, that's a concern right now. Um, through November, the collections are only at about 20% of the budgeted amount. And I will be working on the mid-year budget amendment in the coming weeks. And, you know, we'll definitely have to make an adjustment there. So we'll have to see where that puts us overall um, citywide with the general fund. Uh, luckily, a lot of the departments are coming in pretty well under budget the last couple of years. So if, if that's still continuing to trend, then that will help us. But the amount of revenue that that is um, being lost in port is significant. It's definitely going to impact us. Um, right now, with all of the other departments, they seem to be going back on the trend with the community center, the parks programs. Um, those other areas that were affected, the building department didn't get affected nearly as much as we thought it would in the beginning. So everything else in the general fund is, is right on trend and um, that looks to be promising for the year. And then we've been able to, you know, build fund balance the last couple of years, uh, which is great. We've got it up just over that 20% that, that our policy stands for. Um, so depending on how everything pans out this year, we dip into fund balance. Hopefully we don't. That's not the goal. We want to continue to that for, I mean, it is there for these sort, sorts of things, but finally got it to the 20%. And we saw when the emergency manager came in prior to that, we had just over 20%. And within three or four years, that was, that was gone. So we have to be very cautious with that. Um, but everything else seems to be looking good. And again, it should be in the first meeting of February. We should have the, the mid-year budget amendment to council. So that will give us a better snapshot of, of where we're going to be this year. And we're actually in the process. We've already started the um, planning for the 2022-23 budget. Um, in November, we sent out the capital request forms to departments, and those were returned. Um, and then all of the initial budget requests by departments have been entered into the system. Those were due just last week. So we have, um, looks like all of those entered. So we're, we're doing good, we're on track with that. And then the revenue projections will begin this month. A lot of them are preliminary. We have to wait for updates from the state, revenue sharing and different items. Um, and then we'll work with the assessor's office to get tax projections. Those have been doing pretty well the last couple of years as well. So that's, um, we'll begin working on those projections. And then the department, department will occur uh, in February. So we'll, the city manager and myself will meet with each department and go over their budget requests. And then the initial budget will be sent out to mayor and council in March. And then we'll actually do a formal presentation in April. And then as we year we'll have the public hearing in May and the council will adopt the budget in June. And then just to talk a little bit about the water office, um, we have been working down there for, I wanna say about three months now. Um, 
just one clerk, and it's actually been going fairly well. Luckily, the class we had this year was scaled back a little bit, so that helped take some of the burden off of her. Um, we're having the same problem everybody else is having, is trying to get a candidate in that office that um, has the skill set and can meet what we need. Uh, there is some accounting work in there, and so, and you know, the job market's tough, so we don't seem to get a lot of applications in for that. So we are still continuing to recruit that, hope to have it filled, um, hopefully pretty soon. Um, but despite that, Lindsay down there has been doing a great job. She, she knows the ins and outs of the office very well, um, so she's been able to keep things running very smoothly. And then, of course, finance backs up when she has vacation or something comes up um, where we need assistance. So the girls in my office have been helping out as well, and they've all been doing a great job. This year, as I talked about at my last report, we were able to proceed with shutoffs this year. Um, as you recall, last year, 2020, we were not able to do the moratorium issue the governor. So we we took a scaled back approach this year and we worked with people. We, we usually did work with people anyway, but we were much more generous this year as far as payment plans go. Um, and we really tried to work with people. There was a lot of programs out as well through Lane Metro that were assisting residents due to um, you know, the pandemic. So there was additional funding out there and we would refer them to that as well. So of the accounts that were in shutoff status at one point were entered in either into a payment plan or or we had the assistant outside um, departments and that that avoided the shutoff for them and then a big chart in the report that shows the the total shutoffs um, throughout the year so we right we have two districts Six of them are, are residential. The District 7 is a much smaller district. It's, it's primarily commercial buildings. So um, we have just over 15,000 accounts. And we sent out 2,600 letters. Normally, we would have sent out more than that, um, but we did scale back a little bit and gave some leeway on that. So out of the 2,600 letters that we sent out, um, 449 accounts were red tag to be shut off, which is about 17%. And then we shut off 45 accounts. So it's not, not too bad considering that, you know, helped you. So didn't have quite as much this year as he has in the past. But we, we will continue throughout the winter to send out letters for those accounts that we try to forget the ones in the winter that are very high. Um, so if they've gotten very hot bills or Behind, since we're behind on their payment plans and those types of things, we'll, we'll continue to remind them that they do need to pay the money or get into some type of payment plan with us. Um, and that's really the, um, the report. I don't have too much right now to report since we're kind of in, that in between time. So I'd be happy to answer any questions if anyone has any. Questions from council? Was there a question? Yes, oh, no. Lisa. Lisa, I have a question for you. Are you seeing, okay. Are you seeing more residents utilizing the online uh, human services? We we have seen. Um, I can't tell you off the top of my head the amount, but we do have a lot more residents opting in for the electronic bills to be emailed to them, especially with all the postal delays that have happened over the last couple of years. We've had quite a few people sign up for the electronic um, e-billing, so that's a nice service. The ACH goes, the direct debit, where we automatically take the payment out of their account. We don't have quite as much of that, of that people, I think because their water bills fluctuate so much, necessarily like that. There is still a decent amount, but we don't have a amount of those. But yes, we have a lot of residents that utilize the credit card online services. Even the T we have we have a lot that do. Thank you, Lisa. You're welcome. Anything else for the finance director? 
Okay, Lisa, we, we thank you for your report. If you would uh, just stay out of the meeting as we go through citizen communications in case there's a question for you. Absolutely. Thank you. And we will move to citizen communications. As a reminder, um, this public comment period is an opportunity to share concerns or present present topics to the city council. This is not an opportunity for dialogue or debate with council. The council may make referrals or request staff to follow up. There is a five minute timeline per person and you need to identify yourself by name. So whoever uh, might be, just come to mind. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and the city council. Uh, my name is Steve Jankowski. Uh, I'm a Roseville resident. Uh, I am also uh, on the board for the nonprofit Down the River for Veterans. Um, we are trying to resolve getting a certificate of occupancy, and this is going on about a year now to occupy the, the space at 787 Southfield. I have here a final approved inspection from September 20th of 2021. And we were told via email from John Myers that this does not constitute a final inspection for us to get a certificate of occupancy. Now, we're in the community. We have done a lot of work to uh, fix up the building and make it uh, hospitable for our veterans. It's the least that we can do to thank them for their service. And I don't know if this needs to be put on the agenda to be resolved, but we have tried multiple times to uh, reach John Myers. We have gone down to uh, his office and was told he wasn't there several times. So we'd like to get this resolved so that we can help our community and help our veterans. Okay, sure. You need to contact Mr. Kazan as the city manager and he'll set up a meeting with uh, Mr. Myers, Mr. Kazan, and myself. And we will look over and see what the circumstances are and what's going on. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sean Stansbury, 853 Lincoln. How's everybody doing tonight? Um, the reason I came here tonight is I was just wondering uh, about the ordinance department. I, on November 30th, I was given a violation for some stuff in my house. I had a couple of trailers I had to move. They were on cement, they wanted them moved. I had some other stuff in my yard. So uh, she gave me a week to, to clean everything up. I was leaving the next day to go to Florida, so I couldn't do nothing until I got back. I was gone for five days. I came back, I tried to clean a little bit up. Um, she came to my residence after the week. I talked to her, it was Denise. She was real nice to me, I told her I cleaned everything up. And she said, uh, I said, can I have a week? And she said, yes, you can have a week. And I said, okay, is there anything I have to do? She said, no, just clean everything up and we'll be good. So um, I cleaned everything up and like three days later, I got two tickets in the mail. So my question, Mr. Mayor, is, or someone can ask, answer me, is what's the procedure when you come to write violations on somebody in the city? You write, I got a misdemeanor and a civil ticket. Two days, the same day that she wrote the violation, she wrote the tickets in the mail. When I talked to her a week later, she said, yeah, just clean it up and we're good. So what's the procedure for when someone's called upon and they come out and they look at the yard and they take an inventory of what's got to be done? I don't think that they write tickets the same day. Is that correct or is that incorrect? They can write tickets the same day. Okay, so why would they give someone a week to clean something up and still write the tickets? That doesn't make any sense. Sir, have you talked to the chief of police about this yet? No, I haven't talked to the chief of water. That is, that is where you should direct us. Well, I've got a court date this week. I've got to go to court for the tickets. So that's why I'm here tonight to see if there's any clarity from you. No, sir, I, without me looking at the, the entire reports and everything that was done, I can't help you out on this. 
Okay, so what you need to do is to contact Chief Waters. He's the person that's in charge of the officer that you mentioned. He can give you the procedures that are followed. Okay, but in the city, when we come out and someone's written up, you you are you are the police chief. You should know. When when someone's called pride and they call on somebody, don't we give them time to clean up the yard? That's what I'm asking. You. Not necessarily. Oh no, so we don't we don't give that someone the So the, this is not a period of time for debate. You have five minutes in which to express your Have I used my five minutes or no? No, you, but you're not debating this decision. I've said that the chief of police is the person they need to refer to. Okay, well I'll talk to Chief Waters before I go I guess I go to court then. So just a waste of time when I when I did what she wanted. So all right, that's all I have. Good evening, everyone. Chris Darzinski, resident. And uh, first of all, um, uh, Mr. Duchesne, the elderly gentleman that came to these meetings all the time for so very long, has passed away. So um, humbly and with respect, I will uh, remind everybody that the um, bins and dumpsters directly behind the library is where you place your scrap paper, if you have any. And thank you very much. Second, um, road funding for, uh, for local roads through Public Act 51 of 1951, which means that is 70 years old now. That funding mechanism and formula no longer applies to um, the uh, local infrastructure and the demographics. So I have um, approached this many times and I have recommendations out there, and I would um, like to open the dialogue on that at a future time. If residents want to um, want to make note of um, the recommendations that I put forth over a year ago on this, I would direct them to the Lincoln Park Community Association page on Facebook, where I pinned it to the top, and it's item number four. And we'll um, hopefully be the city that can lead a whole bunch of other cities and put forth something to the state and get that Public Act 51 that's 70 years old, get that updated so we have a proper funding mechanism or brand new funding mechanism for local roads. Thank you. Hello. Situation for everybody in the city and around, and I want to thank the police and fire for the very good job they've been doing through this very, very difficult situation. Thank you. Hi, my name is Cassandra Johnson. Uh, I am a resident of Wyndham. And I drive through Lincoln Park every day to get to work in Dearborn. Uh, I'm a member of the DMV here today. They told you why we're here, but I think you need to be aware of some of the amazing things that we do. And we do have multiple buildings, one of which you've heard that we're trying to get cleared up in your city. There's an event we had on 9-11. We used that to take care of one of the issues that was requested by the city that needed to be handled. But we use that as a memorial for 9-11 itself. We had police, fire, veterans, teachers, children, so many different people come together to memorialize that day, to look forward to our future through what has been a horrific time for all of us as people. And it was a magical event. And it was police and fire from surrounding communities. So I think it's important for you all, if you have not checked us out, whether it be at the building that we have in your city or the building that we have in Wyandotte, to see what we do. Um, if you haven't heard, we just took two truckloads down in Kentucky for the tornado that hit down there. Um, so it's not just veterans. We help as many people as we can. So we really do need your help um, with the certificate. Uh, and really pay attention and, and, and see what we do because we're really about giving back, helping our veterans. We have Pops over here. Uh, his first name is Richard. 
we do have another veteran in our organization who's also wheelchair bound, and he lives so close to the center here in Lincoln Park, they can just realign over. Um, a lot of our um, physical activities um, happen at this center in Lincoln Park, so it's a center for our veterans and their mental well-being to have this facility available to them. Um, a lot of our um, food events happen in Wyandotte, our, our Christmas pancake breakfast. Um, that's where our food donations occur, but the more spaces we have to reach these veterans and their families and help them out is truly important. I unfortunately was not able to reach my veteran, um, and we are no longer together, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to stop helping veterans because I know what they face, and me and my children still live it every day, so please, please, please help them. And um, if I may ask, I don't know if you can answer, but what is the best way to reach you so we can get that meeting set up? Well, through the city manager would be the best way, because he's going to have to... Is there, is there a phone number that we can get from you today? Well, sure. 386-1800 is the Rampart City Hall number, and then his extension is 1231. Did you get that 1231? Thank you. Do you have anyone else wishing to uh, dress up? Hearing none, we will go on to our oral reports to the Mayor and Council. Council President, shall see them. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, residents of Lincoln Park. I don't have a whole lot today, Your Honor, but I just want to once again uh, say thank you to our superintendent, Mr. Daniel Field, for allowing us to be here today. I was hoping for a bigger crowd today, but I was thinking. Maybe perhaps the cold weather today. Also, the bullet department and the veterans, I hope you guys can come up with a resolution. Um, I was actually helping decorate your establishment last Christmas. I don't know if you recall that. Our UAW Local 3000 Veterans and Women's Committee helped decorate that. Attended the grand opening. I thank you for all that you do for our veterans, particularly here in Lincoln Park. Sean, I hope you get your, uh, you should take care of our chief waters. And uh, with that, thank you everybody, and that's all I have for now. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Councilman Hickey. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, first of all, I do want to thank the veterans for everything that you do, and, and particularly the Gumbo Lake Park, and you've taken uh, one of our buildings and you're working on it, and I want to thank you for that too. Uh, I was there at your opening, and I put in a little bit of money to help you get through your first problems. I want to, have, I want to say it was money well spent. Um, and I want to thank you. I grew up, uh, 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 I grew I'm oh, sorry. I did something that uh, helped the veterans, and uh, you guys stepped up and donated some money to another veterans group, which was really cool, and I want to thank you for that. Um, you're a really good group, and thank you. Um, I, I want to say thank you to the school board and to my friend Paul for, for putting this meeting together and helping us do this. Um, I am an advocate that I believe we should have open meetings. I've made it very clear in the past. I think it's very good that we can be here, we can spread out, and we can, we can do this. Um, and I'm not questioning, and I want to thank the mayor, uh, because I know he was quite involved in getting and setting this all up. Um, but I do have a legal question in the attorney's not here tonight. Um, is he goes here? Oh, I didn't hear Um is it there supposed to be a vote of the city council before we move a city meeting to another location? And I want to know why that wasn't taken care of. Personally, I was not aware of something. I would suppose in this instance, Your Honor, the decision was made last week at the emergency management meeting that council, you could have attempted to call an emergency meeting of city council to schedule a new location, but I would look at the statute to see if there's still a requirement that council needs to set the separate location. You have to meet in a public place and post a property. So in terms of that portion of the act, you've met the mandatory requirements. However, Councilman Higgins raises a point that I'm not prepared to answer without having the entire act and the case law behind me for 
a regular meeting that had a location moved due to exigent circumstances. I would say that in terms of the statute, the provisions you've taken for social distancing in light of City Hall, that you met on all parameters, whether there's a technical violation of the statute remains to be seen. Your Honor, the fact that Council posted the meeting held it open to the public would not lead to a violation of the Open Meetings Act. Again, I want to make it very clear. I think this was a wonderful idea. Um, I'm very happy that this happened. Um, we do have some issues here, but um, that wasn't my issue. My issue is, once again, this commission had, this committee had made a decision. We went with it without going back to the council. The council were supposed to be making decisions in the city. They didn't think we should have been involved. Um, I would have been all in favor of this. I think this is a great idea. But again, it's a matter of council power that, that I question. And I just want to put that on the table. I also want to thank uh, uh, over the Christmas holiday, the DPS was called again to do an enormous job for us. Um, they took good care of the, the, the water main breaks and the ditch. They had some other water main issues to deal with. Um, and I just want to thank you for doing an outstanding job. That, that, that's all I have to thank you, All right, Councilman Tobin. Good evening, everybody. Um, I hope everybody had a wonderful holiday. Um, welcome to the new year. I hope that it's a wonderful year for all of us and things change. Um, I would like to meet in person every meeting. However, with the numbers and where they are, it's quite scary. I, um, I got ill over the holidays and it wasn't fun. And I would hate to have a meeting like this and see someone get sick as a result of it. Um, I'm praying that, you know, they, they keep saying, oh, two years is going to be the limit. We're going to be back to normal. I'm hoping that's true because um, right now it's just tough for a lot of people and the numbers are outrageously high. Other than that, I don't have much to say. Down over for veterans, um, I hope that we find closure to this issue this week. Um, as soon as James and, and the mayor have time with John Myers, um, and we can put this to rest and you guys can move forward with all the wonderful things you do for not only for the community, but for all of the veterans. And everybody just stay safe and happy new year, everyone. Thank you, ma'am. Councilwoman Groff.
is a good individual for tickets. It stands very well. I'd also like to hear from how that's going to work out. You can give us a, an update from the chief. If the chief can update to us, that way we're going to do it. I have to bring the council meetings as we need to know what's going on. We should have it on. And, and then when these issues come up, I think we should get an email from whoever is doing it so we know what the resolution is. Other than that, I want to say that for are still in the audience after the retirement. Hope you enjoy very much I have as I have. And uh, that's all. Thanks for Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Again, thank you to uh, Terry Dangerfield, the superintendent, for allowing us to, to meet here today. And uh, Don for filming and Paul for taking care of all the, the details and working it all out. He was here with four hours ahead of time, making sure everything worked and that we would have a successful meeting tonight. Um, for the vets uh, group, any meeting will need to be after three o'clock because I work here during the day. So um, if you want me to be part of it, just take part of it and we need to schedule it at that point. But I'll be glad to meet. And with that, happy new year everyone. And we will entertain the motion to adjourn. Oh, support. 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 Councilperson Salcido? Yeah. Dupre? Yeah. David? Yeah. Kelsey? Yeah. Ross? Yes. Tobin? Yes. And Mayor Parks? Yes. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you all. Done.